When we think of temporary traffic control zones, we think of vehicles and providing drivers reasonably safe and effective movements through the traffic control zone. However, they aren't the only ones using the road or passing through the traffic control zone. Pedestrians and workers are also using the road to pass through or work in temporary traffic control zones. In fact, they face more severe hazards than those who drive through it, as they are not protected in the confines of a vehicle. Hi, I'm Sergio with Arthur and Hansen, and in this video, we'll be covering pedestrian and worker safety in temporary traffic control zones. A wide range of pedestrians may be affected by temporary traffic control zones, including the young, elderly, and people with disabilities such as hearing, visual, or mobility. These pedestrians need a clearly delineated and usable travel path. When planning for pedestrians and temporary traffic control zones, the following are three items that should be considered. One, pedestrians should not be led into conflicts with vehicles, equipment, and operations. Two, pedestrians should not be led into conflicts with vehicles moving through or around the worksite. And three, pedestrians should be provided with a convenient and accessible path that replicates as nearly as practical the most desirable characteristics of the existing sidewalks or footpaths. Be sure to not cut off or move a pedestrian route for non-construction activities such as parking for vehicles and equipment. Accommodating for pedestrians with disabilities may involve a little more planning and work, but is much needed for their safety. To do this, consider the following seven elements. One, provisions for continuity of accessible paths for pedestrians should be incorporated into the temporary traffic control plan. Two, access to transit stops should be maintained. Three, a smooth, continuous hard surface should be provided throughout the entire length of the temporary facility. There should be no curbs or abrupt changes in grade or terrain that could cause tripping or be a barrier to wheelchair use. Four, the width of the existing pedestrian facility should be provided for the temporary facility if practical. Traffic control devices and other construction materials and features should not intrude in the usable width of the sidewalk, temporary pathway, or other pedestrian facility. When it is not possible to maintain a minimum width of 60 inches throughout the entire length of a pedestrian pathway, a 60 by 60 inch passing space should be provided at least every 200 feet to allow individuals in wheelchairs to pass. Five. Blocked routes, alternate crossings, and sign signal information should be communicated to pedestrians with visual disabilities by providing devices such as audible information devices, accessible pedestrian signals, or barriers and channeling devices that are detectable to the pedestrians traveling with the aid of a long cane or who have low vision. Six, when channelization is used to delineate a pedestrian pathway, a continuous detectable edging should be provided throughout the length of the facility, such that pedestrians using a long cane can follow it. And number seven, signs and other devices mounted lower than seven feet above the temporary pedestrian pathway should not project more than four inches into accessible pedestrian facilities. And real quick, before we move on, if you can just hit that subscribe and like button, that'll help us out tremendously. And now back to the video. Whenever it is feasible, closing off the worksite from pedestrian intrusion may be preferable to channelizing pedestrian traffic along the site with temporary traffic control devices. Temporary traffic barriers may be used to discourage pedestrians from unauthorized movements into the workspace. Should pedestrians need to pass through a portion of the worksite and there is a hazard of falling debris or materials, a canopied walkway should be used to protect pedestrians. Equally as important as the safety of road users traveling through the temporary traffic control zone is the safety of workers. Temporary traffic control zones present temporary and constantly changing conditions that are unexpected by the road user. This creates an even higher degree of vulnerability for workers on or near the roadway. Equipment and vehicles moving within the activity area create a risk to workers on foot. When possible, the separation of moving equipment and construction vehicles from workers on foot provides the operator of those vehicles with a greater separation clearance and improved sight lines to minimize exposure to the hazards of moving vehicles and equipment. Here are some key elements to consider improving worker safety in temporary traffic control zones. One is training. All workers should be trained on how to work next to motor vehicle traffic in a way that minimizes their vulnerability. Workers having specific traffic control responsibilities should be trained in traffic control techniques, device usage, and placement. Two, temporary traffic control barriers. Barriers should be placed along the workspace depending on factors such as lateral clearance of workers from adjacent traffic, speed of traffic, duration and type of operations, time of day, and the volume of the traffic. Three is speed reduction. Reducing the speed of vehicular traffic, mainly through regulatory speed zoning, funneling, lane reduction, or the use of uniformed law enforcement officers or flaggers should be considered. Four, activity area. 
Plugging the internal work activity area to minimize backing up maneuvers of construction vehicles should be considered to minimize the exposure risk. Five, worker safety planning. A trained person designated by the employer should conduct a basic hazard assessment for the worksite and job classifications required in the activity area. This person should also determine which engineering, administrative, or personal protective measures should be implemented. While it's important to make sure that drivers have an effective route to pass through a temporary traffic control zone so they can make it on time to work, it's even more important to consider the safety of pedestrians walking through the zone and workers in the activity area. We hope this video has given you a better understanding of how to keep those pedestrians and workers working and passing through a temporary traffic control zone safe. Be sure to stay tuned for our next video. We'd also love to hear from you guys in the comments. What are your experiences with temporary traffic control zones? Be sure to follow us on all social media platforms to stay updated with our latest safety tips and tricks. And as always, until next time, be safe and thank you.